Welcome to the 80s with me, your pal Jamie Fenderson. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jamie, after the last two episodes of not remembering anything, we don't think you actually around in the 80s. You're a poser. You're full of crap, dude. Well, relax. I do have memories. I have memories starting in 1982. In fact, we had a podcast episode where the wheels of fate directed us to talk about our earliest life memories in 1982. You should check it out. And while Milo was talking about murdering hamsters, there was only one thing on my mind. E.T., the extraterrestrial. So one of my earliest memories was my mom taking me to see E.T. in the theater. And I won't lie, guys, I was an emotional wreck with that movie. I was a mess. My mom even had to, like, take me out in the lobby just to make sure I was going to make it through. <laughs> yeah, it's true. There's two scenes that I remember, do, like, tripping out. The first one when it was where E.T. was, like, dying and they had defibrillators on him and, and it was all this drama and Elliot's yelling and, and it was, I was, a, I just became emotional wreck. That's why my mom had to take me out, like, dude, are you going to be okay? Can you make it through the movie? So I finally made it back in, but then I tripped out one more time at the very end when E.T. went home. His, his, his people came in their spaceship and took him away, and he had to say goodbye to Elliot. <laughs> it was so sad because I, I was convinced he was never coming back. And he didn't either because they never made a sequel, so he's up in E.T. land just chilling with his peeps. Never came back. So, an interesting fact, E.T., which is iconic of the 80s, was the highest grossing film of all time for over a decade. So, since it was made throughout the 80s and into the early 90s, it was the highest grossing film of all time. Until Steven Spielberg outdid himself with Jurassic Park in 1993. Yep. So, other movies I remember, The Dark Crystal. I have another vivid memory of The Dark Crystal. I was watching this movie in, back in 82, and the movie kind of scared the crap out of me. The Skeksis were scary, Audra was scary, but even the Gelflings and those grasshopper things they rode were scary. The whole world was scary. And Jim Henson was asked, dude, why do you like to scare kids? Are you a freak or something? What's up? And Jim Henson replied that he thought it was okay for kids to experience a little fear in a safe environment so think about like Grimm's fairy tales they are pretty grim or even dad acting like a monster the kids know they're safe but they get to experience a little bit of fear which is a, I think it's a pretty good thing just a little bit of fear just to experience it but to know you're safe so I think he's right about that 1982 was a great year for sci-fi fantasy and horror so one, one of the movies that I loved that came out in 82 was Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. It was made on a fraction of the budget of the first, but way better. <laughs> the first one was all like cerebral and everybody was grouchy wearing beiges and azures. It was, it was, it was, it was kind of bad, but Star Trek II was great and it probably saved Star Trek. So we got to get a lot of other films and even the later shows, probably because of Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. I also like Ridley Scott's Blade Runner, which came out in 1982. I didn't see it till later, but, but I really like this movie. It was a box office bomb when it came out, probably because it was competing against E.T. and Star Trek. But it became a slow-burning masterpiece. The visuals still hold up, and it's kind of considered the father of cyberpunk movies. And I think the Tears in, rain, in the Rain, that's the best monologue in film. Rudger Hauer's Tears in the Rain monologue, it's the best. Tron also came out in 82, and it didn't do well in the box office either. In fact, the arcade game did better money-wise than the actual movie. I just think it was ahead of its time because they had a lot of computer concepts that we might take advantage, take for granted today, like RAM and bit and master control. This was all very computer-like, and I don't know if people in 1982 were ready for that. There were some great sword and sorcery movies that came out in 1982. One of them is called The Sword and the Sorcerer, which is about as sword and sorcery as you can get. That's a pretty good movie. 
I think it's kind of underrated. It's about like a mercenary barbarian with a three-bladed sword fighting evil sorcerers. I would check it out if I were you. Arnold Schwarzenegger made his big role debut in Conan the Barbarian. And then we all know what happened to Arnold after that. And the Beastmaster came out <laughs> starring Mark Singer. It debuted in 1982, and then it would go on to play on TBS 24-7 <laughs> throughout the 80s. There were some good horror movies that came out. Steven Spielberg was busy. Uh, he came out with Poltergeist, which scared the crap out of kids. We were scared. We, we were pretty scared in 1982. If you were a little kid in 1982, there was a lot of fear to be had. Poltergeist was rated PG because there was only rated PG and R. You were either one or the other. So this was before PG-13, which they implemented in 1984, probably because Steven Spielberg was scaring the crap out of kids and parents were kind of ticked. <laughs> but Poltergeist was scary, dude. <laughs> He had ghosts coming out of the TV and stuff. It was so scary. And Creepshow was good. Stephen King's horror anthology. That's another one I enjoy. Stallone was busy in 1982. He came out with two movies. Rocky III with 80s icon Mr. T as Clubber Lang. And Rambo First Blood. So let's talk about E.T. again. And video games. So... E.T., the game, came out in late 1982 for the Atari 2600. Do, do you remember the Atari 2600? It was like one of the first home video game consoles. <laughs> and E.T., the game, was pushed out in time for Christmas, but the game totally wasn't ready. <laughs> and the gameplay was so frustrating. Another memory I have in 1982 was my mom, who was a big gamer, yelling and ripping the game out of the console and throwing it. Like, she hated E.T. the video game. <laughs> it was so frustrating. The gameplay is like, notoriously bad. And, and this, they wanted to push it out, but it wasn't ready. So this game may have contributed to the big home video game uh, console crash until the NES was introduced in 86. And in fact, there's a big Atari landfill. I think it's in Arizona. Like, there's a whole landfill full of Atari consoles and cartridges. And a bunch of them are like the E.T. cartridges because people just <laughs> threw it all away. It's, they couldn't sell it anymore because it's crap. One of the worst games of all time. One of the best movies of all time made one of the worst video games of all time. It was crap, y'all. I'm not, I'm not even lying. So why don't we talk about a few events that happened in 1982, some notable events. So in 1982, the government ordered the breakup of AT&T as a monopoly. So that's back when they actually used to do that. So that's the last time they really did this. Uh, they tried and failed on appeal for Microsoft in 1999. But this was kind of the last big monopoly breakup that the government ever really conducted. Argentina invaded the Falkland Islands, starting the Falkland War. And guess what? We have a whole podcast just about the Falklands War. So I think you should check that out. It's actually pretty interesting. Falkland Islands were owned and administered by, by Britain, but Argentina went to claim it. And they had a, they had a war. Disney opened the Epcot Center in Disney World in 1982. I didn't know this. For some reason, I thought the Epcot Center in Disney World was a lot older, but I guess it's not. And another thing I didn't know was as young as it was, I guess, to say, was the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall. Uh, it was dedicated in Washington, D.C. in 1982. I actually went there. I have a touching story about my son who read a letter that someone had left for a young man who died there and he went home and wrote a letter to that young man too and left it at the wall i thought that was just uh i thought that was really sweet that's when we uh we took our trip to dc um and he got the he got he got the full feel for it 
So let's talk about a couple of beverages that were introduced in 1982. So Diet Coke was introduced in 1982. Milo and I... <laughs> <laughs> we went to the store and bought everything that was introduced in the 80s, all the food and drinks. Not all of them, 10 of them. And uh, we went back to my place and we partook and almost died of a heart attack. <laughs> and one of the things we had was Diet Coke, which was introduced in 1982. And it was the first product to use the Coca-Cola trademark for almost a century. So it originally used saccharin but it soon switched to aspartame in 1983, but it originally used uh, saccharin. Speaking of aspartame, Equal also came out in 1982, the artificial sweetener. <laughs> and it's aspartame-based. And so what did I do? I actually put Equal, the sweetener, in Diet Coke, and it erupted like a volcano. <laughs> <laughs> and and then I tasted it and I almost got sick <laughs> because it's like double aspartame. I called it the volcan volcaspartame. It's when you mix equal <laughs> with Diet Coke. It's disgusting, y'all. Don't do it. <laughs> Another thing that came out in 1982 is Bud Light. Yeah, that Bud Light. That came out in 1982. So... Miller Lite was already out, and Budweiser, they wanted to get in on that action. So <laughs> so we tried some Bud Light, and so the podcast cover, the 80s and 90s uncensored podcast cover, has Milo and I trying Bud Light that day. <laughs> you can also go to our shop, our merch shop. You can get a beer glass with us drinking Bud Light, and you can get some, some body lotion if you want to moisturize with the guys. And it has a picture of us drinking Bud Light that day. <laughs> so there's a little behind the scenes of uh, how we got our face with us drinking beer on our merch and on our podcast cover. It was that day that we, we tried all of the <laughs> foods that were introduced in the 80s and almost killed ourselves. Let's talk about music. And you can't talk about music from 1982 without talking about Thriller. The album, the video, Michael Jackson released Thriller 1982 was huge. So Thriller was big and it was this really cool video, almost kind of a almost like a mini movie played on MTV all the time. The Thriller video was so good. Some other great songs that also had great videos was Beat It, PYT, Wanna Be Starting Something and Billy Jean which I thought was a cool video because I remember another memory of 1982. See, y'all, I remember. Um, he had his jacket kind of draped over his shoulder, and he's walking down this kind of you know, street, and everywhere he walked, the sidewalk would light up. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. The number one song on the Billboard charts, though, on the Billboard 100 was, Physical, physical, I want to get physical, physical. By Olivia Newton-John. I didn't know that song was that big. And then number two was Eye of the Tiger by Survivor. From the aforementioned movie Rocky III. Some other favorites of mine that came out in 1982 were Gloria by Laura Branigan. 8675309 Slash Jenny by Tommy Two-Tone. I think this is an interesting song because it doesn't have an area code. Because back then you didn't have to dial area codes if you were calling locally. So nowadays it would be like 206-867-5309, which doesn't sound as good. So I don't know if you could make a song like this today. I also thought it's interesting that John Cougar, as he called himself, formerly John Mellencamp, now John Cougar Mellencamp, or John Mellencamp again. I don't know what this guy's name is. But he had the number seven and the number eight song on the Billboard charts with number seven, Jack and Diane, and number eight, Hurt So Good. And then my son has a few favorites because he, I forced him to grow up on 80s music because I can. <laughs> because if the boomers could force me to listen to their stuff, I can force my son to listen to mine. And uh, some songs that we like that came out was Centerfold 
by the Jay, Jay Giles band. I don't even know if he knows what a centerfold is. <laughs> it, it's a catchy tune, but he's like, I, he probably has no idea what a centerfold is. <laughs> centerfolds were, were great back in the day. That's that's all the that's all the visual nookie you could get. <laughs> now it's all over the place. Tainted Love by Soft Cell. He loves that song. And I Can't Go For That by Hall and Oates. I think they ought to make a Hall and Oates breakfast cereal. I don't know why they haven't done that. General Mills, Post, Kellogg's, you need to get on that. I heard Hall and Oates also had a spat not long ago about who owns what and whatnot. They had a kind of a falling out and they kind of sued each other or something. That's pretty sad. Watching Hall and Oates fight is like watching Bert and Ernie fight. It's kind of sad. I hope they get it together. I hope they stay friends. Some books that came out in 1982. So Stephen King, we're always going to mention Stephen King because he's always coming out with books in the 80s and 90s. The Gunslinger, or Dark Tower Number 1. They made a movie about it. Different Seasons, which was the inspiration for a great movie called The Shawshank Redemption. The Color Purple by Alice Walker. The BFG by Roald Dahl. Schindler's List came out. And Steven Spielberg would go on to make a, a award-winning movie about based on that book. The Tao of Pooh. By Benjamin Hoff. Have you, have you read The Tao of Pooh? I, I reread it recently. It's great. Check that book out. That should be on your reading list. And The Running Man. Uh, all of these were turned into movies later. So there are a lot of movie-worthy books that came out in 1982. Let's talk about television. Because television raised us. Television is our mommy. So some debuts. The Pilot premieres for Cheers on NBC on September 30th. Great show. I love this show. And it would go on for 11 seasons and even spawn off another great show called Frasier. We have a podcast episode you should check out where we compare Cheers with Night Court. Some other great shows that premiered in 1982. Family Ties with Michael J. Fox as the yuppie Republican kid. Love that show. Knight Rider. We have a Knight Rider retrospective episode. You should listen to that. Fame. TJ Hooker. Cagney and Lacey. Silver Spoons. And Newhart. I really like Newhart. I, I always thought it was kind of comfortable. Like this nice bed and breakfast in Vermont. And even like the the theme song, na 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 and 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 hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. I love that show, Newhart. I always loved that show because I thought it would be kind of nice to live in that bed and breakfast in Vermont in the winter. And then another show that debuted, I I want to do a retrospective on sometime was Mr. Wizard, starring Don Herbert. So before Bill Nye, the science guy, before all he, before all these kind of science guys on TV, you had Don Herbert as Mr. Wizard, and I loved this show. And it was I remember it being on at weird times, maybe because it's, it's Canadian or something. But Mr. Wizard would get together with these kids, and they'd hang out in their kitchen or something, and they'd do all these cool little experiments that anyone could do at home. And he teach you about science. And I think Mr. Wizard is like the OG kid science. Like Bill Nye and, and, and everybody is great. But Don Herbert is the OG science TV dude. So I really like that. I really like that show, Mr. Wizard. Do you guys remember Mr. Wizard? You should check it out. Like watch some YouTube videos if you've never seen it. It's just, it's good. It's chill. And some finales, some shows we lost were Mork and Mindy, Nanu Nanu. Uh, Robin Williams would go on to do a few things after Mork and Mindy. WKRP in Cincinnati and The Incredible Hulk, which I thought was a 70s show, but it went all the way to 82. So some other things in television from 1982. CNN launches its second channel called CNN2, and later it would be called CNN Headline News. I guess it's called HLN now, which 
I don't know what that is, but it was kind of a big deal. Like cable news, 24 seven cable news was already a big deal. And then on the 1st of January, they launched another one. So you're just getting news all the time. I think we kind of take that for granted now, but back then it was kind of a big deal. Like cable 24 seven cable news was kind of a big deal. ABC broadcasted The Elephant Man in 1982. That's another memory I have. It's a sweet movie. It's about it's about The Elephant Man. It's the whole story behind that. It's it's a great movie. Uh, I think it's rewatchable. Another cable thing that happened, The Weather Channel launches 24/7 <laughs> of the weather. <laughs> I don't know who thought this is a good idea. The Weather Channel is boring as shit. But you know what? It's still on. Like, So it's lasted since 1982, The Weather Channel. I don't know who goes and watches 24 hours of the weather. I, I just don't get it, but whatever. And then USA begins 24 hours of operation, including USA Cartoon Express, which is cable's first animation block i didn't know this there was someone called susan stafford who was the original wheel of fortune letter turner so i didn't know that so she went off wheel of fortune to do humanitarian work and vanna white who they saw as a contestant on the price is right and she's super gorgeous so they're like hey why don't you be the letter turner on the wheel of fortune and Vanna White's still doing it to this day, and she still looks good, and she's still turning those letters. So 1982, we got introduced to Vanna White, who has been turning letters ever since. Eddie Murphy hosted SNL. That was interesting because it's the first time that SNL was hosted by a member. He was still a member of SNL at that time, so Saturday Night Live. So this is the only time it happened because he, he was so he started to get so big that he could like host the show that he was a cast member on. And then another thing that happened in at the end of nineteen eighty two was Surround Sound for the Home was introduced by Dolby. I only knew one kid, his name was Timothy in my town who had this and it was pretty awesome. Timothy was kind of the wealthier kid in town the kid who had like both his biological parents and like his siblings were like full siblings and <laughs> and they ate the brand name cereal he had that so we'd go over to his place and like turn on the movie and listen to the surround sound in his in his basement theater <laughs> timothy <laughs> he turns out now that i look back he he actually like wasn't super rich or anything. He was just kind of middle class. It's just the rest of us were poor. <laughs> so in July, ABC broadcast the FIFA World Cup and West Germany beat Italy. That's kind of interesting because there's no such thing as West Germany anymore. It's just Germany. But back then, you had a West Germany and East Germany. West Germany was kind of the, the NATO-aligned allies part and then the soviet part was east germany so i thought that was interesting and another thing in sports that happened was the nfl had a big strike and so cbs played division three college ga <laughs> college games while they were on strike 1982 uh, we had super bowl 16 that's how old we are guys if you remember super bowl 16 you're old and San Francisco beat Cincinnati 26 to 21. So there you have it. 1982 in a nutshell. And yes, I do have memories of 1982. So starting now and for the rest of the 80s with Jamie Fenderson, you'll start to hear some of my memories from 1982 because I started remembering stuff in 1982. Do you have any memories of 1982? Drop me a line. You can... Uh, Reach us on the80sand90s.com, info at the80sand90s.com, or if you're listening to this on our site, leave a comment. Until then, I leave you with this. I'm out of here like E.T., who went home and never came back and made me cry like a little biatch. <laughs>